Good morning, everyone. So today we will delve into a topic that's not just transforming uh, the future of industry, but redefining completely uh, it. It's the industrial metaverse. Our agenda will cover an overview of what it this entails, its impact on competitiveness, a deep dive into a specific use case with, with an IP strategy, and finally, identifying exclusive IP opportunities within this domain. Can you change, please? Yeah, thanks. So, um, so let's start first by understanding what is the industrial metaverse. Um, just try to picture an advanced digital universe that mirrors with great accuracy the physical world of manufacturing, buildings, transportation, and even entire cities. This isn't just science fiction, it's already quite real. It's the next frontier in industrial innovation. And by harnessing the power of cloud and edge computing, along with industrial AI and technologies like digital twins, uh, the industrial metaverse isn't just a concept, it's a real toolkit for sustainability and optimized processes. Can you change, please? What do you see? Yes. A video. Let's go. Okay, perfect. So now let's just see a very short video about Nokia Industry Metaverse just to figure out exactly what it is. Digital physical fusion will not be like manufacturing to create advanced and interactive digital twins. These innovations would absolutely revolutionize all aspects of operations from design to testing to real-time monitoring and remote maintenance. Supply chains will also be transformed. Business systems will interact with partner systems in real-time to plan and forecast supply and demand. Sensors will capture key information across all stages of the operation to enable dynamic production schedules. Human augmentation will improve how people interact with the combined physical and digital reality in a safe, productive, and immersive way. So this is the industrial metaverse. Uh, so, and just to show how real it is, uh, it's a comparison between the customer metaverse that we probably are, all heard about it, uh, the enterprise metaverse and the industrial metaverse. And as you can see, it's really, really something. And now let's see how it will uh, confer a competitive edge to companies. So first, uh, it brings, of course, data-driven decision-making to the forefront. The ability to analyze digital data leads, of course, to optimal layouts and processes, sharply reducing the trial and error associated with traditional methods. Uh, next, we have the, of course, AI-enabled use cases. That means that employment of AI to leverage data from digital twins for predictive maintenance and other use cases can significantly diminish, of course, the downtime and the operational expenses. We have also the operational efficiency. Before any physical implementation, AI-powered tools undergo rigorous testing in the metaverse, ensuring that everything works perfectly. Uh, we have the role of big data, of course, big data analytics. It cannot be overstated. The wealth of data from the metaverse can unveil in insights pivotal for elevating product quality, customer satisfaction, and streaming operation. Furthermore, immersive training and support offer a paradigm shift in the workforce development, slashing the cost and direction traditionally associated with training while also elevating skills level. We have also the real-time collaboration that will break down geographical barriers, fostering an environment of swift, swift problem solving and innovation, which is crucial for rapid product development. And lastly, we have enhanced product uh, lifecycle management through the industrial metaverse. Uh, we can ensure every product stage is managed with peak efficiency and sustainability. Next slide. So for our task number two, uh, we will explore a use case focusing on enhanced operation. This will demonstrate how the industrial metaverse can revolutionize workplace simulation, enabling the collection of invaluable data. These 
data propels a myriad of AI enabled applications from virtual factory planning to predictive maintenance. Uh, our mission here is clear, providing a solution that not only leverage the industry and metaverse for real world operational benefits, but also ensures exclusivity and competitive advantage through smart IP strategy. So no, I laid the floor to Antoine. Yes, and uh, first oh, we have a market-based view and see where we stand in the industrial value chain. And to be even more pragmatic, who we are, for example, we are the Siemens and we provide solutions to industrial customers such as Renault. And so here in the value chain, you see that we take the assumption that we build industrial equipment as Siemens does and we will study the case of us providing uh, metaverse, metaverse. Uh, yeah so basically we are the, the the green parts and we have a lot of um, partners uh, edge computing solution providers front-end device suppliers software providers or cloud providers working with us next slide please so on the resource view, um, our business model would be uh, to build a platform, uh, a technology ecosystem, which would be open. Uh, it's free to log in. Then if you want to add some features, you have to pay. And the value proposition, we want to leverage our existing industrial um, ecosystem, so basically, components, uh, tools, we have the machines, we have the customers, and we want to align that with industry standards. Um, yes, and to leverage our network of complementor. Next slide, please. So yeah, what would be our competitive advantage? So we believe we have actually two, maybe a focus with uh, differentiation of advantages and premium price, but as a matter of fact, on the cost side, we have also very interesting advantages because as we already build uh, machines, we have data re readily available. So of course, for design, software design, it's much more easy. And we have a network of suppliers and customers. So for customers, we would lower our marketing costs. We have already uh, Renault and the like in our portfolio and also R&D costs as all these partners can contribute uh, through, uh, as I've said before, um, open platform. And on the premium price side, differentiation advantages, we would have a unique selling proposition, which would be to provide our clients a more efficient and qualitative R&D. So very quickly, because uh, Benjamin already mentioned a lot of advantages of the industrial metaverse, but cost reductions, uh, digital twins to do testing more efficiently, easier management of stock of parts, cheaper R&D, everything remote, uh, reduction of time to market. So that's for the cost of our customers and commercial advantages for our customers. Of course, the quality, reducing defects seamlessly and a bit of green with decarbonized products as we have less physical facilities. Then. So putting everything together uh, that was said before uh, from a resource perspective and a market perspective, both on the left side, you will see the resource perspective, which is basically talking about our own company. Um, our competitive advantages um, are based on our own expertise in technology. Uh, as Siemens, we have um, digital twin technology already. We have uh, IO, uh, IoT systems uh, and uh, data analytics uh, capabilities. Uh, we also have uh, standard setting power, which is uh, a very important uh, competency. But we also have the capability to work with uh, industry complementers, uh, such as uh, devices uh, manufacturers, uh, connectivity providers, edge and cloud computing providers, uh, which we can enable to, uh, to provide the value to the customer. So uh, having identified that we have some cost advantages uh, because of this know-how and resources, uh, we still understand that many of our com complementers and our strategic suppliers may become um, in the future possible competitors. 
possibly substituting our setting proposition. So on the market side, the unique selling propositions that we offer, uh, we should think about ways to make these exclusive. Uh, so this includes then uh, operational excellence that we provide to our uh, to our customers, uh, also risk and, uh, and costs that may be reduced. Uh, we have a solution ecosystem, which is open uh, for developers. We are high tech and up to date and uh, easy and complete. Compatible by means of interoperability and uh, plug support from the best in class uh, in service. Uh, supporting best in from best in class, meaning uh, that the we are best in class basically in uh, in operational excellence and we uh, utilize that image. And our target group is uh, excellence seekers. Those are manufacturers trying to become uh, increase their operational excellence, but also OEMs who might be our um, a target for licensing, for example, to make their machines compatible with our systems. So we go for freemium uh, business model for the seekers and licensing for the OEMs, either through uh, the platform or through direct marketing. Then how can we sustain that competitive advantage? How can we make our resources uh, Vrin, which is um, on the next slide, is then we considered multiple uh, generic um, strategies, but we identified that the fortress monopoly is not really usable. Uh, because of the tangibility, intangibility of the technology. Uh, value chain monopoly was also ruled out because it's not suitable for digital ecosystems. But there's something to be said for value added monopoly, hot monopoly, and monopoly in a box. Uh, so we will be thinking about, about incorporating different elements, specifically the focus on user features, uh, filing strategic patterns, having full control over some parts of our uh, uh, enabling technology and also adding some ingredient branding in the mix. That brings us to the next slide, um, which is the general idea of a 360 degree IP strategy, incorporating those elements to prevent all of the current enablers and future competitors to provide the same customer value through a barrier of functionalized IPR uh, to prevent imitation and substitution. That way, our customer benefit of operational excellence can stay in it as can stay exclusive. Okay, I leave the floor to Karina. Karim. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay, so here uh, we suggest a uh, representation of uh, uh, the, the complexity uh, linked to the to the use of metaver uh, metaverse and how uh, this uh, uh, operational excellence uh, uh, can be obtained. Uh, this representation is uh, inspired from the, the thermomix case study we had uh, uh, in class. So uh, we first have uh, uh, the, 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 these five uh, stages uh, showing the interaction between the physical world and the, 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 the digital world. So first uh, we have uh, um, the the, uh, the value that it uh, that is added by uh, using the digital uh, the digital uh, uh, things to 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 the uh, digital data uh, to, to, to bring uh, customer benefit. And now with uh, using the industrial uh, metaverse, we collect data from the, 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 the physical world. Uh, then uh, from uh, processing the, the, this data, we get uh, uh, an added value uh, to, to the, 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 the other layers. Uh, including the physical product and the sensors, connectivity, and so on. So we get uh, all uh, gathered the, all this benefit, uh, and of course through through a, a platform uh, like uh, the one we propose, we can get this uh, operational excellence. Next page, please. 
so here we pro uh, we show uh, our the objectives of our uh, IP strategy from the resource uh, perspective and and then from the market perspective. So first, from the resource uh, perspective, uh, we want to reduce uh, the risk. Uh, to safeguard our uh, value creation through, uh, minima uh, through avoiding uh, infringement of third-party uh, IP rights, uh, sign uh, licenses, necessary licenses uh, to, to use uh, co complementary technologies, and also we want to monitor uh, regularity development and privacy uh, and data protection to ensure compliance. The other side, uh, we want to exclusify uh, our resources and suppress, suppress uh, imitation. Uh, so uh, uh, we want to, to get uh, exclusivity uh, for, for all our developments, key developments, uh, to sustain the, the con uh, competitive uh, advantage. And this. Uh, uh, key uh, developments uh, include uh, algorithms uh, for simulation, virtual planning, prediction, predictive analysis, and data processing, uh, methods for int integrating digital technology, artificial intelligence, um, and uh, the visual uh, and aesthetic uh, of, uh, of, of, of the platform and, and the 3D models. Uh, and also, we want to reduce the risk, uh, the cyber risk, by implement, uh, to, to implement uh, trade secret protection and including uh, cyber uh, uh, security. Next, please. Next slide. And in the other uh, side, from the market perspective, we want uh, to to to, say, uh, to to have strategic positioning against comp uh, co uh, competitors uh, by preventing uh, circumvention and substitute substitute uh, substitute products uh, in the market so we look uh, and it don't identify uh, 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 subst uh, possible substitute and protect them uh, by by ip to 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 avoid uh, arrival of the substitute to the market uh, and uh, cover cover roadmap uh, technologies uh, with uh, forbidden rights uh, on the other hand, uh, we want uh, to communicate the, the, the importance and the uniqueness of uh, the value uh, proposition uh, to, to our customers, uh, including uh, uh, communication about reinforced, uh, about, about uh, reinforced through trademarks, ingredients, uh, and brandings, so, uh, and, and, and show the high uh, high-tech visual designs and element uh, across uh, all components. Uh, the economic communicate about uh, the, the importance of economic savings that the, will be, uh, the, the customer will will get from uh, from uh, our uh, for you using our platform, and also the importance of of the the free access that we, that he can get uh, to test uh, the, the the platform, and also. Uh, that will bring a continued support uh, during the years. Uh, next. What we want to um, obtain with our IP, we want to obtain um, technology leads, um, particularly by uh, using uh, AI-enabled analytics and methods. They are um, to provide this technology lead other enablers like blockchain, computational power, hardware, AI, accelerators, edge, for edge computing, digital twins. With our IP, we want also to um, obtain a unique selling proposition, uh, more efficient production, as we say, uh, operational excellence for um, the manufacturing, for the companies. With our IP, we want also to create a dominant design with the main graphic user interface or a new experience user interface, including typeset, colors, reporting. And with our IP, we want also to achieve brand loyalty, 
uh, with reputation for for our brand and affiliated brands in the industrial metaverse. So next slide, please. So these slides uh, summarize our customer benefits. So providing uh, operational excellence. And with our IP, we want to create a sphere of exclusivity with the IP portfolio, uh, with patents for method, system, device, trademarks, uh, design, our graphic user interface or experience user interface, using technology standard for uh, one the key element is the interoperability and standard essential patents, and also sui generis protection uh, for circuitry and AI chip design. Next slide, please. So we uh, adopt a backward design starting with um, our business model, um, is studying the economic effect and the appropriation, and then um, creating an IP administration and investing in our IP. So focusing on our appropriation regime, we need to take into account that this is the industrial metaverse has a short product life cycle. It is technologically complex, but Siemens already has a very interesting bargaining position. So this will determine how we can make IP, um, make our chosen use case exclusive. Next slide, please. So what is the desired impact here? As said before, we want to have a technology lead. We also want to set a technology standard. We want to improve our time to market and to create brand loyalty as main impacts, although you have examples that could actually sustain all the others. And finally, this will determine the IP to be chosen. So, for example, in terms of patents, we will try to protect the process of creating and managing digital twins, the integration method for AI with digital twins, and everything around that. With trademark, we will try to protect brand names, logos, and slogans associated with our metaverse platform. The design rights will focus on the unique aesthetic, aesthetic features for the user interface, and then we will also use secrecy, control of assets, lead time, and design secrecy. Thank you very much.